This chapter is about the shrink wrap modifier. And as you can see, I have spent all morning modeling this beautiful top for this make human character. So uh, it's the finest in arts and craftsmanship, but it still might need a little tweaking. And let's add the shrink wrap modifier in order to tweak it. Shrink wrap modifier needs a target. I'm going to take the woman mesh and there you go. The beautiful barrel style outfit has been transformed into something that's actually close to fitting. And of course, the more subdivisions you add, the more accurate your results will be. If you wanted this to fit over here and here, right around the breast, you'd probably be a good idea to insert more loop cuts, like so. Control R will do that for you. So you can see, first of all, my computer is slowing down quite a bit. And also, it is a good idea to match the geometry roughly before you do the shrink wrap. But you can see it also, it works pretty well. Now let's have a look at the couple of options here. Of course, you can limit the shrink wrap to a vertex group like always. You can use an offset and you can check keep above surface. I'm going to reduce the subdivisions here because this is really slow. And you can see even though I clicked keep above surface, this doesn't do anything. The reason is this option doesn't do anything until you set the offset to something greater or smaller than zero. So let's just use a, an offset of a really small number and the keep above surface option will take care of the rest and keep this dress or this tank top, whatever you want to call it, above the surface. You can toy around with the subsurf levels, but that doesn't do anything. And even in the Blender Wiki, they said that it doesn't do anything. So I think in theory, this is meant that you can ignore this subsurf modifier and instead use it over here. But I didn't see any changes in the mesh at all. So I chose to use a separate subdivision surface modifier. Now there's three modes over here, nearest vertex, nearest surface point, which is default and project. And nearest surface point, nearest vertex is basically a snapping difference. Usually it's a better idea to use nearest surface point because that will be a more accurate result. Because in this case, every vertex of the top mesh will try to snap to a vertex of the woman mesh and not to snap to the nearest surface point. So this might be useful in some special situations, but I recommend you to use nearest surface point. I started a new scene here and in this I have a monkey, a sphere and a plane. And the plane is going to get the uh, shrink wrap modifier and it's already been subdivided. And I'll use the monkey as a target and you can see it's clinging to the monkey by its entire geometry. So shrink wrap modifier tries to wrap it as tight around the monkey as possible. And that's going to change if I choose project. Project has a couple of other options. First of all, you can see that only where there is a face of the monkey available, and by available I mean pointing directly at the plane, only those faces will be drawn towards the monkey. So that's the first big difference between the project mode and the wrap mode. Another big difference is you can choose an auxiliary target. I'm going to choose the icosphere here and you can see this is just like using two shrink wrap modifiers. Now the project method relies mostly on the normals of the plane. And right now the normals are pointing in this direction. So if I choose negative, the normals will still point into the same directions, but they will be only calculated if the object is behind on the plane. So if the normals are pointing away from your object. You can also choose both, so it's kind of glued there. There's also a few options over here called axis, and it's kind of hard to predict what they'll do. Basically, they are to form a median between two axes and influence the projection, well, let's say style. If I choose X axis, that will restrict it to the x-axis and since there's no targets in this direction there will be no deformation. If I choose y and x combined you can see that it sort of takes a median of 45 degrees 
between the x and the y axis and projects onto the sphere. If I can also choose the z axis, that will sort of make a 45 degree angle in, let's say, 3D. So 45 in this and this angle as well. So I'm not really sure on how this would be helpful, but well, it's there. Maybe some of you come up with a reason. And there is one final settings call faces. Call faces meaning I am ignoring faces. Front faces mean I'm ignoring those faces that are pointing towards me. And apparently this doesn't go for the auxiliary target, this only goes for the main target. If I ignore the back faces, that is basically what's going on anyways, because the back faces are those whose normals point away from the plane. Those. So there might be some special situation where there is a big difference between calling the back faces and the front faces, but I can't really think of a situation when. So this, I'd say, is something cool if you have some goo gluing to something or a yo-yo effect or something. I'm not sure. I usually only use the nearest surface point option. So that was it about the shrink wrap modifier. Thank you for watching.